Hello everyone, welcome to Virtual APLF. I'm Xavier from APLF Hong Kong. In this two-day event, we will focus on Africa and Middle East area, bringing together in industry leaders and innovators from letters, chemicals, machinery, and technology companies to come to our platform. And we define what it means to be connected today We've invited Mr. Ralph Abbott to be our guest speaker. Ralph has been working in the ladder value chain for almost 50 years and did business in more than 100 countries. He's a ladder value chain consultant for various governments and agencies. He's also an expert in modern tannery and machines and has recently focused on tannery ERP and application of the industry 4.0 tanneries. I would also like to welcome everyone online and hope you will enjoy the communications and interaction in our platform. May I now invite our ref to begin? Hi, Hi, Raph. Hi Xavier. How are you? Hi. Great. So you may start our presentation okay. now. There, I, I will share okay. my screen. Yes. And I will show you my presentation yes are we there yeah we're all Very good. good okay thank you thank you thank you Savia, for the nice introduction good day everybody wherever you are thanks for joining this seminar which will try in a very short period of time to explain some basics uh, of a very extensive set of tools that are available in the leather industry and that should fa uh, facilitate the tender reproduction. At the end, I will check my Q&A box. And if time is not sufficient to answer the questions that have been posed, you can uh, write an email to me and I will answer any question that you submit. So let's start. As you know, tanning is the oldest profession in the world. People think otherwise, but tannery, tanning is the oldest profession. It's a tradition over millennia. The thing is, we have to modernize the tanneries. And one of the ways to modernize the tannery is following the Industry 4.0 trend. Industry 4.0, one second. I'm, I'm getting a wrong screen. Okay, Industry 4.0 is uh, a concept of factories in which machines are self-sufficient with augmented and wireless connectivity and sensors connected to a system that can visualize the entire uh, production line, its control, and make decisions of its own. So what does, what does it mean in, in the tanning industry? Is that you connect all your machines, your drums, your... Uh, finishing machines, your shaving machines, your presses, etc. You connect it to a software program, which afterwards handles the whole, um, the whole process. Oops. Yes, industry. So what we actually talking about is smart factory, uh, manufacturing, a smart factory, a factory which just in your imagination, you can put out the lights and then nevertheless, the factory goes on with its production. But you know, Industry 4.0 is a very, very large concept. So what does it mean for tanneries? For tanneries, as I said, it connects your machines with your processing formulas, with your purchases, with your sales, and it, it will connect all together in order to execute those formulas that you have and execute your orders and your purchases. The impact in the tending industry in your tannery will be that you have a much better uh, view of what is happening in your tannery. What has been done until now in the tannery industry, uh, honestly speaking, very little. Some tanneries, very uh, progressive tanneries, they do utilize Industry 4.0 in their uh, processing. 
they do have the connectivity with software programs in order to uh, to en en enhance the industry for zero uh, possibilities. But you know, first you have to start in the theory in order to make it uh, connective uh, with industry four zero. You have to start with some automation with some uh, process control. So you need process control. You need process automation, enterprise resource planning as an overall software program, and you can use artificial reality and virtual reality in order to uh, address your tenery, what you need, how you need it, where you need it. So you can uh, overimpose, for instance, if you want to buy a new drum or a new shaving machine or a spraying machine, you can overimpose it by artificial reality in your own tenery uh, environment and by virtual reality you can even play with it and turn it around and do with it whatever you want however in industry 4.0 the most important thing is the dialogue between the machines and your software so process control and automation are the first step in uh, industry 4.0 because each part of the tannery and the process, they all need to dialogue together. So you cannot dialogue with something that is not equipped to dialogue. And you have to work towards this to create that dialogue. So until now, you know, tanneries were something were known for very dirty industry, badly organized, no uh, organization, etc. So what you see in, in this video, but that's not how the, the tenneries should be like. This is what the tannery should be like. Organized, clean, nice working place, safe working place in which you can, uh, well, you can work as you should work like in any other industry. This is, those were uh, animations quite obviously. This is what real tenneries are, are looking like today. So those progressive tenneries that are enhancing process control, process automation, et cetera. So you can see these tenneries are pretty clean or this tannery that I'm showing you here is pretty clean, pretty clean. It is being managed from a control room, not anymore from by several people in the, on the production floor. You can see in the uh, picture on the, on the left uh, down, you can see how chemicals are being uh, transported from a weighing machine to the drums. And on the other picture, you can see how your warehouse can be, your chemical warehouse can be organized. So in a modern tannery, formulas are not being written anymore by hand and then put on a, a, a pallet of hides or skins. They are now being printed by printers and being uh, ident uh, identified by bar barcode and barcode readers will assist to move each pallet, each lot from one place to another place. And that you can control from your computer screen. From the left screen that you see is the whole programming of the production in a day, separated by the silver drums. On the other screen, you can see how you can follow the process that is going on in any individual drum at the moment. So it's live what you can see and you can interact. So again, uh, let me show you a little bit of how this may work, how this automation works. So you see on the screens in front of you, the formulas developing and things working now water is being uh, sent to the drum and you see on the screen that you can follow that one by one second drum is being loaded with water and then in the middle of the screen you can see a preparation tank or a weighing tank is being filled and then two preparation tanks next to the drums they are being filled with chemicals and these chemicals are being automatically uh, inserted into the into the drum so this should give you a, a small idea or an impression of what it is like to have an automated tannery. Now, 
The automated tannery is the way into a sustainable future because you are due to the automation, you reduce the use of the chemicals. You use the weight, uh, the use of water and of power. New equipment is helping you with high capacity and low energy. Eco sustainability, consistency, and efficiency are the result of process control, because you will be you will be sure that your formula is being perfectly well executed by the computer and by the uh, attached tools. Another thing that is very important is the safe handling of dangerous chemicals. Today, in most of the tanneries that are world in, around, and particularly in African tanneries, for instance, dilution of uh, dangerous acids are being done by hand. And that's very dangerous to, to the uh, operator. One of the important things now today is also the consistency of the quality. Your buyer is not going to buy from you any more 50,000 square feet to be delivered all in one day. He will order 5,000 feet today, 10,000 feet next week, another 5,000 week the week afterwards, etc., etc. But he wants that all the lots that he is buying from you are all of the same color, all of the same feel, all of the same softness. So he wants the consistency from one lot to the next lot which manually by only executed by humans is virtually impossible as you know better than I do. So you need tools in order to assist you in order to create that consistency. Traceability is another thing that's now coming in vogue. Brands are demanding now that you have traceability. First of all, it is useful for you as a tenor to have the traceability inside your factory, that you know which lot is where at what moment and where it's going to go. But much more important is also that you know from whom you buy and that you know that supplier A is having a certain type of quality that you need for a certain type of finished product. And through this traceability, you can uh, find which supplier is more suitable for what and, and product. But then again, you can go as far as the, the farms. If your supplier of the raw materials knows from which farm he is buying and in which slaughterhouse these animals are being uh, introduced, you have a traceability in your value chain, which is becoming very important because you can show to your brand, your buyer, and they to their buyers that the animals are treated properly according to proper animal welfare at the farms where they are being raised and in the slaughterhouse where they are being uh, slaughtered. So that is, it's becoming, each step is becoming more and more important. And Industry 4.0 will help you in order to, uh, to follow the traceability. In the end, you also need reduced effluent. Everything, everything, comes, everything comes with a price. You know, here you see very cheap, no technology drum. They cost $6,000 and they are worth $6,000. So after one year, two years of using them and scratching your leather because they're not very precise, because they're crafted very uh, precise, you see the bolts are in uh, inside and scratching the leather. You know, that's what you get. When you pay peanuts, all you get is monkeys. This is high technology drums. You can get them in uh, polypropylene, you can get them in wood, but these drums are lasting not one or two years. They are lasting 50 years, 60 years. Polypropylene, we don't even know how long they will last maybe a hundred and more years. So this is how your leather in a stump uh, is reacting in a standard drum. The float remains on the bottom. The uh, leather is being uh, how hold up into, into the drum at, at a point, let's say at almost 180 degrees, the leather is, fall is falling back. We even have sound.
So the, wall, the, the ladder is falling back into the, the, the float, which has, of course, a tanning effect, but not all the ladders are being lifted, not all the ladders are getting the same effect. And that is because you have a drum with the uh, normal standard traditional little shelves and the pegs. Now, what, what you can do is, is the next generation in which your drum is differently equipped. It lifts the letters totally up to, together with the, the, the float, it lifts it totally up to 180 degrees. And then both float and letter drop together. So you get the required, required tanning action, but you get also a proper mis, uh, miscellation of your, um, of your float. And I will show this in a little bit more, um, I say, a clear, more clear way on this animation. Sorry. I can't. Okay. One a second, please. Oh, yo, yo. There we are. Sorry for the uh, the problem. So you see the, the float is there, the, the drum is stopped. There are four big shelves and these shelves, they are bringing up the float, you see, to 180 degrees and it takes also your letters up to 180 degrees. And then it drops into, into the drum. So you get that the, the float is being uh, mixed properly and continuously and the leather is moving, all the leather is moving in the drum over the whole period of the time that the drum is running. So what you do get from this performance, from these special drums, you get up to 100% more, 50, uh, 100 more float. You will be saving as a consequence about 50% of water, 50% of energy because these drums, they run slower and they can have a smaller uh, motor and uh, consume therefore less energy, plus or uh, minus 8% less chemical consumption. That is not a scientific figure. Some people are saying they say 5%, other people say they have 10%, but let's say as an average, it's about 8%. The point is that all these savings does, do not influence the quality of your letter. You get the same or even better quality letter. The name of the game is sustainability and cost savings. Now, just to give you an idea, a traditional three by three meter drum will have a load factor of 4,900 kilos. Whereas the new generation drum will have a load factor of 7,600 kilos. So you, so you can clearly imagine that if you buy three traditional drums, that is 14, 15,000 kilos, multiplying 4,910 three times, you get 15,000 kilos. You get exactly the same 15,000 kilo of two of the other drums. So that means it's a saving because instead of buying three drums, you buy only two drums, even if those two drums are relatively a little bit more expensive than the three drums. Let's get to automation and process control. As I said already before, consistency of quality. You get the saving of water and thus you're saving chemicals. You also have less effluent. You consume less natural resources. If you go from process control to real automation, so the execution, the electronic execution of your formulas, then you get a perfect formula execution and the safe handling of chemicals. So let's see what I mean with this. You see, if you do the water addition to your three by three meter drum and you do it by hand or by eyesight, which most of the tanneries in the world do, one day you get, uh, you fill 9,700 liters. Another day you do 10,000 liters because that's the 10,000 liters that you require in your drum because of your formula. 
And then the next day, you will use 10,600 liters. Now, between 10,600 10, liters and 9,700 liters, there is a difference of 10% float. Now, 10% float difference means that you either dilute or you concentrate your chemicals in, uh, in, this, pro in this particular process. You know perfectly well by your experience that it will give you a totally different quality of leather. There are manual systems which are totally unreliable and open to human error. For instance, your worker can open first the hot water uh, and then mix it into uh, uh, the water temperature that you want by adding cold water. But if hot water hits your hides, they are ruined. The electronic system is totally reliable. It has no or very little human error and it's totally traceable. You can see, you can follow the process on your touchscreen. You can also see on the touchscreen what you actually have done. Let us take that on the, 25th, the 22nd of May at, at 7.36 p.m. you wanted to load 3,000 liters into your drum the system will show you that in reality, you loaded 3,020 liters. And you needed to load 28 degrees centigrade of water. In reality, you loaded 28.2%. So your action, your action is very, very, very close to what you uh, theoretically require. Some, something that is impossible to reproduce manually. I mentioned worker safety. Now, whether you are legally responsible or not, you are responsible, at least morally, if your worker has an accident at his workplace. So the less dangerous uh, materials are handled by hand, the safer the working environment will be. But again, also here, you have a matter of consistency. So let us say, the chemicals are being, you see here, they are being mixed automatically in a weighing tank, or they are being, the, um, sorry, the acid is being diluted in the, in the weighing tank. It generates heat. Now, if these, this diluted acid is being brought immediately to the drum, then one day the temperature can be 40 degrees, another day can be 50 degrees, it can be 60 degrees, whatever it is, it is inconsistent and it will react differently with the quality of your leather. So what you do is you bring from the weighing place to a holding place these, um, these acids, you control the temperature of the acid and when it reaches the right temperature, you convey it to a preparation tank, which is close to your uh, drum. Now, why the preparation tank? Normally, it happens that these acids are being added to the drum with buckets. So your formula usually says that you have to add 100 liters of diluted acid into your drum over a time lapse of 30 minutes. So what does your worker do? He takes the bucket, he takes the diluted acid and he feeds it into the drum. So the drum gets, boom, one big load of diluted acid and then it works it over. If you automate this process, then the computer will calculate, I have 100 liters, I have 30 minutes at my disposal. So what should I do? I should add my chemicals by three liters per minute. Again, by executing this formula, this sequence, every time you do your retaining or your um, adding of your diluted acid, you create um, a sequence which is consistent every time over and again. So you get more consistent letter. For this, you need a tannery again that is equipped the tannery equipped with the right tools. Again, I will show you how this works in a mixing battery, where you can weigh your liquid chemicals, 
only liquid chemicals can be weighed in such a tool and they can be added then automatically to your drum. So the computer decides on the base on the formula how much water goes in to the weighing tank. Here it says uh, 100 kilos of water. Then you get whatever chemical you have uh, to add. So you get one chemical, two chemicals, three chemicals. They're being added together in your uh, formula. They are mixed together. They can be brought to the right temperature that you need. So if you need 60 degrees, it will add some uh, hot water in order to get the right temperature. When the mix is finished, it's being added to the drum. Once the chemicals have been mixed and transported to the drum, the whole system is being cleaned in order to have it ready for the next uh, preparation. Now, don't think that you're wasting those chemicals that are now being cleaned. They are also going to the drum to which this formula was being uh, meant. So, what does automation actually do? Automation can do all kinds of drum functions. Obviously, that your drum is capable of doing those uh, actions. It can do the rotations. It can determine the speed. It can drain, evacuate air. It can wash. It can load. It can unload. It can position the drum in the position that you want or need and can do all the door functions. But it can also regulate the temperature. You can control the temperature. You can load, you can control the load weight by when you load the uh, heights in your drum, you can automatically uh, read out the quantity of heights that you are loading. And this is being transferred to your computer who then calculates how much chemicals or it calculates the formulas in uh, with the right proportion of chemicals. You can heat the float. You can do manual dosing, quite obviously. You can do an addition to the preparation tank. You can do pH measuring, which you can do centrally and in each drum in a continuous way. You can do water addition, as I have already showed to you, and you can, uh, you can add the liquid chemicals. There's also a system to do powder products. However, first let us see the preparation tank. Prepara preparation tank is like the other tank uh, you see. The chemicals are coming from the, the diluted acid waiting tank or from your chemical preparation tank, weighing tank. It comes to the preparation tank. It fills up. Again, it can be um, heated or cooled, whatever you need for your chemicals. And once the time is right, your computer tells you when the time is right. So if you have to load your drum at noon with this mix of chemicals, the computer will load that mix of chemicals to your drum at noon, not before, not later. So it's not like with your uh, uh, workers that Either they go uh, to the toilet, they have to go to, uh, to go to lunch, they go out for a smoke or something. No, this formula is being executed exactly on time, S per formula. So again, consistency. Powder products are much more difficult to uh, prepare uh, in, uh, automatically. It's much more difficult and it's much more expensive. For a normal tannery, tannery, you would look at a system that's costing you a million dollars, which very few or no tanneries are prepared to pay. So people prepare these little bags with all those chemicals, with a little note inside what is in that bag, and then they go to the drum in order to be loaded. But you know, uh, preparing those chem chemicals manually, that is a problem because you humans are not precise whether we like it or not we are not precise we make errors we make also um, approximations so let us say here as i wrote you have a chemical a color 
that is composed and that is the right color that you want by five kilos of one chemi uh, uh, dye, five, five chemicals of another dye and a third chemical of two uh, kilos. And that's the, the result of the color that you're getting. So one day by mistake or by not being precise, the worker is putting in the, uh, the same colors, but six, three and three uh, kilos. And you get a totally different color. And again, a third day, the same formula, the same worker, the same uh, uh, dyes, you get four, five, three. And they, again, a totally different color. Now, what happens? After you, de de you detect the color is not the same, you have either to redye or you have to throw away the letter or uh, reclassify the letter. You can, uh, you can call in, again, automation. So the computer will tell you at a, in the time that you want. So if you are used to prepare your chemicals tonight in order to use them tomorrow in your process at the drum, the computer will tell you start preparing the chemicals for lot so and so. What happens is you go with your barcode reader or your, your worker goes with the barcode reader to the chemical warehouse. He sh shoots on the barcode on any of the chemicals that avoids that he picks up the wrong chemical. You know, all these chemicals are in the blue barrels or are in brown bags. It's easy to make a mistake, especially when you have chemicals which have a name and they have, uh, let's say, uh, chemical X1 and X2. They, are this, they look the same, but they are not the same. So the barcode will assure you that he gets the right chemical because if he shoots on the barcode, and the barcode is right, he gets a green light. If he shoots on the wrong chemical, he gets a red light. So then he takes the chemicals to the weighing station. He weighs the chemicals, and this is connected via the weighing station to the computer uh, control. If you need five kilos of one chemical, and you put in four and a half kilos, nothing happens. Five and a half kilos, nothing happens. Four kilos, there, five kilos, what you need, there it happens. Because then automatically you get a barcode print out. You get a label with the barcode, which you can put on the container of your, um, of your chemicals. The same happens more or less for P centralized pH control. Now, I will show you with this video exactly what happens when you prepare those chemicals by computer. You can verify the worker who is authorized to do this. He picks up the chemical. He weighs the chemical. There he come, gets the barcode of the chemical. He puts it on the little bag. And on that, you have the lot number, the drum number it has to go to, et cetera, et cetera. All the information that you need. He puts it on a pallet and that batch of chemicals is ready to go to the drum. Now you work on the drum. Verify the worker with the barcode. Verify the chemical. There you see he gets the, uh, the green light, which he did not get on the first bag, which is a red light. He puts it into the drum and then the drum runs. He closes and the drum runs. Again, now he wants to take the pH. The, the computer says stop the drum. If the drum doesn't stop by itself, picks up the sample, goes to the pH uh, control station, and then he verifies uh, the, the pH. The system says identify yourself. He identifies himself. Then the pH is being uh, checked. If the pH is right, it, uh, the drum can be started again. There you are. If it's not right, you can correct the pH in the drum always by pushing your touchscreen. Everything is being done from a control room. It's a fully automated production. And that is where you get your consistency. Now, let me tell you, I have seen a tannery in Brazil where one lady is running 20 retanning drums and one worker on the floor. And it works with automation like a charm. Okay, 
said enough about automation because it uh, i have uh, talked a lot about automation because it's a central part of the um uh, the, uh, tenery 40 erp enterprise resource planning is also part of this tenery for uh, tenery 40 we cannot call it tenery of uh, 40 because that's a name that is uh, that is uh, registered by Lanxess. anyway Industry 4.0 and ERP are greatly connected to the automation of the tannery. What can you do with ERP? You can do sales and marketing. You can, you can check the purchase and do the purchase of raw material. You can do the production planning. You can follow the production step by step from the moment that you start to the moment that you finish. You can do the maintenance of machines. You can do your stock control. You know exactly how much stock you have in terms of hides and skins, in terms of chemicals, in terms of anything that you have in stock in order to uh, do your job. Even for instance, the packing paper or the cartons or the pallets that you have, those can be uh, controlled in the ERP system. The ERP system at the end of the process, when you have finished the product and you have executed your order, can do the measuring, it can do the invoicing, it can make packing lists, it can even do the order of the shipping, it can control your finance, your room and human resources, and your customer relation, uh, relation management. So, especially in Africa, when I talk about uh, ERP, and I'm talking about ERP for many years in Africa, they always say, ah, but my tannery is too small. That is a misperception. ERP is not only for big tenderies. ERP is not only for sophisticated tenderies, it, uh, for um, sophisticated productions. ERP is a must for all tenderies, for all industries. No matter if the production is small or large or complicated or simple, because ERP assists all tenderies, big and small, to create a transparent, well-organized efficient production it follows the sales and it gives you live financial information let me say if you are as a salesperson sitting with your client you can um, take in his order you put it on your tablet you write it on your tablet your tablet is connecting to the ercp system in to computer in the tannery and it will tell you how much exposure the client has with you, how much money he has still has to pay. He will, uh, it will tell you his, uh, the limit of credit that you give him. It will tell you at the same time if the, uh, the article that he wants to buy is in stock or not, or if at what stage of production you would have an availability of that article. So in the end, it will give you also a reliable delivery date for your client. So you need to know, a tannery manager in his tannery needs to know what? The real costs of his tannery, the real order and stock position of his raw materials and chemicals, the realistic day to day flow of his tannery production, the real delivery, uh, delivery times of incoming and outgoing products, because you not only need to know when you deliver to your clients no you also have to know when your chemical supplier or your hide and skin supplier is going to deliver to you in order to maintain the contract terms that you have with your clients you can determine the uh, production bottlenecks of machine or machine issues maintenance spare parts so let me say if your one of your shaving machines is uh, under producing so it doesn't follow the capacity. It gives you an idea what you have to do. Repair the machine, uh, main, maintain it, or change the machine. The same also in your human resources. You can also determine if which worker is more active than any other worker. worker. So as I said also before, you can have the outstanding payment position of your clients. And most of all, you will know where you make a profit 
and where you make a loss. So you will not understand which department actually makes a profit and which department actually makes a loss. So what are the benefits? Productivity and efficiency. Stock reduction. And that uh, makes a cash flow improvement. So what, does, what do, do I mean by this? Is normally when you don't know exactly how your production goes, what orders you have, etc., you go on uh, experience and order your chemicals. So you may order one, two, three containers of chemicals. You say, yeah, because my tannery is uh, in Zambia and I need to buy my chemicals from Germany. There is a lead time between me ordering and negotiating the chemical, them placing the order on a steamer, have it arrive in port, then bring it from port to the tannery. I have a lead time of two, three months. That time is being incorporated in the computer, in the ERP program. So you know when you have a number of orders of a particular, uh, for a particular chemical, that how much chemical you have in stock, if it is sufficient, and whether you have to buy more and when you have to buy more. So that is very, very important because as this, uh, it says already on the screen, you can improve your cash flow. Cost control. You can, you know your cost every little stage of your production. So what it costs to run the liming uh, per lot. Eh? You can do it per lot, per department, and you can control the cost each and every step of your production. In terms of chemicals, you can compare one chemical with the other, how it influences your costs. You can uh, compare your machine costs, whether it's cheaper to work on one type of machine or one brand of machine than on the other, etc., etc., etc. Standardization of the process I've already talked about because the automation takes care of that and the traceability I have already mentioned that you can go from the farm up to the finished product and you can trace it throughout your production. So when your salesperson is sitting with the client or your client calls you and asks, where is my delivery? You can just check on your computer and say, well, your delivery is at the moment at the spraying machine. We expect it to, uh, to uh, go into the measuring department tomorrow and the day after tomorrow we will ship. So you have a total control over this. You can do your planning of your purchases. So if I buy from supplier X those heights, and if I go uh, put them through my production in order to produce that end product, you can plan this, you can control this. Like you can uh, control your purchases, you can plan your sales. Tracking and control of the whole pro uh, production process I already mentioned. And ERP is meant to have a full integration with process control and automation, a dialogue with the machines and your equipment. And this is important, you see, again, to avoid human error. Now we have your formula, which is being executed throughout the process. Your, uh, your, your uh, letters are coming in wet blue to the shaving department and the shaving, uh, the, the order says you, you need to be shaved to uh, 1.4 millimeters. The lot that had been shaved before was 1.6 millimeters. So if you depend on your worker to change the setting of the machine from 1.6 to 1.4 millimeters, that is correct, quite obviously. But really, can you always depend on that? You know that by yourself from the results. If you have uh, Industry 4.0, in which the ERP dialogues with your shaving machine, the shaving machine is being put to 1.4 milli uh, millimeter, in this case, automatically, no error. And like the equipment can dialogue with your shaving machine, it can dialogue with all your machines. Obviously, the machine should be equipped to dialogue. Some machines 
are capable of giving information and not taking information. Other machines can do both. There are also machines who are of an old concept and they cannot. However, even if your machine does not have all these uh, capabilities, they can be inserted into the machine. So you can make a, a bridge between your machine and the ERP system, quite obviously at a cost, but it's better to shave at 1.4 millimeters at the first go rather than do the whole process and then come back and say, ah, I have to change the shavings again. I have to reduce the thickness. So tannery ERP is characterized by specific functions to manage the tanning production. It uses the latest technology to create particularly advanced solutions for data collection during the production process with the use of wireless terminals and RFID tags. So you use your smartphone, you can use your, your tablet, and you can walk through the tannery with all the information that you need. It integrates the production equipment, such as drum spraying machines, chemical formula management systems, measuring machines, everything you can, uh, you can connect it to Industry 4.0 uh, software. So at that point, you see, and I will conclude here, because I am overdoing my time already, uh, you have uh, the tannery at the fingertips and it enables you to take the right decisions. Let me do one slide for the environment. Remember, leather is the article that we want to sell. It's sustainable for shoes and bags. No plastic, no, uh, sorry, leather bag or leather shoes have been found in the stomach of a whale. Plastic has. Thank you for your attention. In case this presentation triggered some interest in you, please contact me. You can email me or you can WhatsApp me on both uh, addresses that I'm giving you. So thank you very much again for your attention and I hope to hear from you.